coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. I'm so grateful to God that we're talking about 25 years of Fresh Dew. And for 25 years, we've preached nothing but the undiluted word. So if you've watched Fresh Dew for 25 years, you can predict what you're going to hear. That's routine. The routine of Fresh Dew is to bring you fresh inspiration and direction from, from the word of God, from the source for your life. We're not going to get more exciting and go to other sources to bring out things, to make it more interesting. No, no, no. There is continuity and it goes along with routine. My prayers for you are full of praise to God. As I give him thanks for you with great joy, I'm so grateful for our union and our enduring partnership that began the first time I presented to you the gospel. I pray with great faith for you because I'm fully convinced that the one who began this gracious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always, in every prayer of mine, making request for you all with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. The answer to anything that came as a result of sin is found in redemption. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. Any answer of God to man's condition, to man's problem, is found in that redemption. Man must identify how God has taken care of it and accept it. Join us at Makaira Moments, a two-edged sword teaching seminar. No other apostle called the gospel my gospel. Because Paul took ownership of the gospel, and according to Paul himself, it was given to him, one of his tasks was to complete the word of God for the church. So that means, listen, without the revelation of God given to Paul, no Christian can be established. But now in the gospel, the righteousness of God has been made manifest. And Paul is saying, if you want to be established, if you want to have a good base, a rock solid foundation for your life, Get into the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ and get to know this gospel that I declared unto you. Hello and welcome to Fresh To You. I am Pastor Ngechi Ene and it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh To You. Fresh To You is a program designed just for you. It's designed to build you up and to give you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Today on Fresh Tea, we continue our series, The Power of Continuity. And this is part two of that series. And we're taking that series for the first time in 2023 as we celebrate 25 years of Fresh Tea on television. Amen. So our text has been from Acts 11. I read from the New King James and from the Message Translation 23. When he came, I had seen the grace of God. He was glad and encouraged them that with all purpose of heart, they should continue with the Lord. From the message, as soon as he arrived, he saw that God was behind and in it all. 
He threw himself in with them, got behind them, urging them to stay with it. I love this. Urging them to stay with it for the rest of their lives. So, child of God, I believe that this, this series will urge you to stay with it, will urge you to continue with the Lord. We looked at many definitions in part one, and I really encourage you to, you know, watch part one. If you're on social media, you can flip off the page and write there, it's there, part one. Watch part one so it gives you a good background to what we're going to be talking about going forward. So just one or two of the definitions that we used. We said continuity means the state of being continuous, uninterrupted connection, complete scenario of a motion picture. We said to continue means to draw out or prolong, to maintain, to go on with, to remain in the same place or state, to last or endure, to persevere without interruption, unceasing, persistent. We looked at some words in the Greek, um, prosmeno, hemeno, um, emeno, and those words all have the root meno, which literally means to stay in a given place, to stay in a given place, to abide, to continue to dwell. So we're talking about continuing with the Lord. We found out from Ecclesiastes 7, 8, the New Living Translation, that finishing is better than starting. Finishing is better than starting. So after all these definitions, what we're going to begin to do now is what I've called understanding continuity. We're going to be looking at continuity with some other words and understanding the link, some of these words pop up and bring some confusion in the concept of continuity. So before we go further in the series to actually discuss the things we're to continue in, we need to understand the concept of continuity. The message is titled, The Power of Continuity. And in doing that in this section, what we'll be doing is comparing or contrasting continuity with some other concepts or words that will make the whole idea of the picture of continuity clearer to us and you know some of the things that you know um, threaten our continuity and some that will enhance our continuity so understanding continuity a continuity and routine we're going to begin by discussing routine continuity and routine what is routine yeah you weren't expecting that right routine means a sequence of actions regularly followed. A routine is a sequence of actions regularly followed. A routine is regular and unvarying. And it shouldn't be a surprising word to any believer, really. Because, you know, even in your physical body, there are basic routines you follow. If you're a woman and you've got a regular menstrual cycle, there is a routine you follow, you should follow, at the time your period is expected to stay clean and not have everybody know that you're in your period. Some routine. If you're a person who's clean, the routine of getting up in the morning, take a shower, the routine of brushing your teeth in the morning and in the night, the routine of cleaning under your armpits. So if your body requires certain routines and the, the routine of eating food, the certain things, you wake up in the morning, you're a housewife, what are we going to cook today? What does the menu say? If you have a menu, do we follow the menu? Don't we follow it? What does child A like to eat? Routine. So if some things are regular and unvarying in your physical body, don't you think that in your spirit man, which is the real you, understanding that many things in your physical body mimic the, spirit, the spiritual realm, don't you think that there will be routines in your spiritual realm that are as important and should really be taken for granted as they are taken for granted in your physical body. Why it's important to state this is the concept of routine many times is one of the biggest stumbling blocks to continuity. I'll say it again. The concept of, remember, a sequence of actions regularly followed is many times the the, the stumbling block to, to continuity if you don't do some of the other things we're going to learn how to continue in. Because you find Christians saying things like, oh, this Christianity is boring. I mean, so that's it. I get up in the morning. I go to church on Sunday. 
from in the choir, I wear my choir uniform, I sing in the choir, I listen to the message, I do praise, and I go home. Then they want me to come on Tuesday to pray, prayer meeting day. Then they want me to come again for teaching service. And then they want me to do this. They say I can't go to parties. They say I can't drink, I can't smoke. And so I just keep going, just go to church, come back, go to church, come back. Harass me if I read my Bible, I should be praying. Please, it's boring, it's boring. You're comparing it to the exciting, sinful life you lived before. So the routine of going to the club, the routine of partying was fine. But the routine of going for fellowship, the routine of praying every day, like you brush your teeth every day, the routine of fellowshipping with God daily, the routine of being part of the body, that routine becomes boring. If we don't understand the importance of routine, if we don't understand the concept of routine, routine becomes one of the greatest stumbling blocks for you as a believer. Glory be to God. So what is God's concept of routine? Does God even understand routine? God is spirit. So if God is spirit and we are spirit and we found our physical bodies follow routines and therefore our spiritual the real us should follow routines as well. Does God have any such regularities? Is God regular and unvarying? What do we find out from him? Look at Malachi 3, 6. It says it straight up. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Period. I am the Lord, I do not change. Routine means regular and unvarying. Just same old, same old expected. I'm the Lord, what you know of me, um, you, you can expect nothing else. That's who I am. I do not change. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same. He's the same. The same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ doesn't get up one day and say, ah, these people will find me very boring. If all these 2,000 years, we keep telling them to pray in the name of Jesus at some point, they're going to get bored. Can't we just create something else? What do you think? Let's flip it around a bit. Let's change it a bit to make it more exciting. Let's give them a new name. No. It is the name of Jesus. It shall be the name of Jesus. And it will continue to be the name of Jesus. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I am the Lord. I do not change. Oh, Lord, you are just the same. The same thing you said yesterday. It's the same thing you're saying again about this matter. Don't you know times have moved on? Don't you know this is the 21st century? Don't you know things are different? No, I don't know I am the Lord. I do not change. Routine, regular, and unvarying. Matthew 28, 20. I am with you always. Period. I'm with you always. Teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the earth. I'm with you always. So we can, it's actually expected, guaranteed, that Jesus is with, with us always. He doesn't play hide and seek from you. Oh, these people always know I'm here. Why don't I hide a bit? So today I'm not here. Then they have to look for me. They have to pray really hard. They've got to fast for 100 days then I'll show up. I've got to bring some excitement. I mean, if my presence is with them always, they'll take me for granted. No. He says, I'm with you always. You can rely on me to be with you always. It's all these scriptures we're looking at now. By your definition, some of you, of routine being boring. Then God is the most boring person that exists. That's what he means. He must be boring because he doesn't change. He doesn't take his presence away. He doesn't change his name to make us get more excited about him. He's the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. He says, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. And I love this one in James 1.17. I'm going to read it from the RSV and the Living Bible because I like the way they put it. Every good endowment and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of light, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. There is no variation or shadow 
due to change. The Living Bible says, For whatever is good and perfect comes to us from God, the creator of all light, and he shines forever without change or shadow. Child of God, God is a God of routine. God is predictable. God is reliable. If I let's put it this way, you know, if God had a secretary, secretary, she'd have no work. If God had a secretary right now, she'd have no work. Because some of us have this picture of God, you know, he's a God who runs around. Oh, Patrick is calling. Okay, give me Patrick's file. Oh, what else? No, Patrick can wait. This, 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 this matter can wait. Oh, Daniel is calling. Oh, um, can I check? Oh, Daniel's matter looks urgent. Okay, secretary. Bring the file. Let's deal with it. Oh, in case you just, in case you just, just, just interrupted. Let's check what in case matter is. So you think God's secretary is running around like a crazy person with her iPad punching his appointments? No, 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 no. God has taken care of everything. He's actually resting. He's rested. Jesus is seated. Read the scriptures and see what He says about Him. God is not running around trying to get exciting new things across to you. What Jesus did. He did, and he took care of everything. So God, God has taken care of all our issues, all at the same time. There's no craziness in heaven as your prayer requests are coming. God is predictable. God is the same. It is the same Jesus. It is the same name. It is the same word. It is the same thing. If faith comes by hearing, it is the same way faith comes by hearing. That faith will continue to come by hearing. We don't have to invent new things to make it more exciting and break the routine. So what happens when you have this concept of routine breaks your continuity and you now begin to look for things that make you fall into the hands of false prophets? Because all these prophets, false prophets do is they reimagine and repackage Christianity. They reimagine and repackage your experience. It's almost like a, like a theme park. You go to Disney World today, there's this experience. You go two years later, they've reimagined and repackaged the experience so you can pay and come in. That is not Christianity. But when you have the concept of routine, I've been coming to this church for 20 years. It's the same way we pray. It's the same Bible we preach. What do you want to happen? I should bring out the Quran and preach from it to bring some excitement. No, this is a church. We preach the word of God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Glory be to God. That way we don't get ourselves into theme park situations and into movie situations where the preacher has to continually repackage and reinvent and be creative, look for content, things. He's building things to make it not boring to you. God is spirit and he reaches out to you, spirit man. When you begin to walk as spirit that you are, you find out that it is your physical body, it is your flesh, which has its own routines that begins to revolt against the routines that come with being a believer. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. God is dependable. Thank you, Jesus. God is dependable. God is dependable. God is dependable. So we don't have to get ourselves into a situation where we find ourselves pressured to believe something else. I'm, I'm so grateful to God that we're talking about 25 years of fresh dew, and for 25 years we've preached nothing but the undiluted word. So if you've watched fresh dew for 25 years, you can predict what you're going to hear. That's routine. The routine of fresh to you is to bring you fresh inspiration and direction from, from the word of God, from the source for your life. We're not going to get more exciting and go to other sources to bring out things, to make it more interesting. No, no, no. There is continuity and it goes along with routine. So continuity and routine. Let's quickly look at continuity and newness. And why this is important is it almost looks like it's a conflict now quickly go through that. Continuity and newness. So definition of new means produced, introduced, discovered recently or now for the first time, not existing before 
of recent origin or arrival, already existing but seen, experienced, note that, already existing but seen, experienced, acquired recently, or now for the first time. So the concept of newness has to be understood in line with continuity because it almost seems opposite to continuity, to, to routine rather. Let's look at some scriptures. Isaiah 43, 19, behold, I will do a new thing. Ah, but we just said God is the same. He does not change. Now he says, I will do a new thing. Hmm. Now we shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the Pasankechi. You just said God is the same. He does not change. Now you tell me God says, I will do a new thing. Okay, okay, calm down. Let's read some more scriptures. You must look at scriptures together. Look at Ecclesiastes 1, 9 to 10. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything really of which may be said, I added really, of which may be said, see this is new? It has already been in ancient times before us. You begin to see that? So going back to what we read in Malachi, he said, I'm the Lord, I do not change. Therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Then rush to La Lamentations 3, 22. Note what, what we just read in Malachi 3, 6. I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed. What have we seen so far? God says, I'll do a new thing. But we find the preacher saying in Ecclesiastes, there's really nothing new. These things have been there, just that we didn't know them. So when you call them a new thing, they're actually not really new. God is the same. He doesn't change. He says, for this reason, you are not consumed. Then go to Lamentations. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. The ERV says every morning he shows it in new ways. Do you begin to see the picture? What you call new is new to you, but it's not new to God. That is how newness does not actually clash with routine. For you to understand continuity. And that is where the freshness comes into your work. That is why routine cannot be boring. Because God is the same. You have the security and the assurance. He's not going to introduce a repackaged concept of Christianity to make it more exciting. You can rely on him. He's the same old God. The name is the same. The power is the same. The grace is the same. But he knows all of these things. So what does he do? He gives them to you in new seasons and new bits and brings it to you. That is where the excitement comes. That is where the, 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 the thrill of being a Christian. So you continue. It's not boring. There's a routine. But you're getting injections of new that have already been because God is the same and does not change. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So I can expect new things in my life. When Fresh G started one television, I didn't know there was a time that would come that would be on social media. I didn't know something called Instagram would come up. I didn't know about Facebook at that time. And we could actually go on Facebook and air Fresh G and write on your phone. Those were new things. But do you think they're a surprise to God? You think God is shocked? No. He says, behold, I will do a new thing. I didn't know it would be on DSTV at any point in our lives. I didn't know the whole of Africa could listen. We were just in two cities in Nigeria, and that was fine. So what is going on? Nothing is new to him. It's been hidden from us, for us, by him. But he's known all these things. So God releases these new things in new seasons. And when you walk with God and you continue with him, you step into new seasons in your life. Why does he do it that way? Well, you can't take everything. Do you think 25 years ago, if he told me about now, I would understand? Or the faith would be there to even continue? So as things are unfolding, he begins to show you in bits what he has in store for you. The concept of newness doesn't really contradict routine. It is what brings vibrancy to the routine. It is what encourages you to continue in the Lord. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for fresh and new seasons that lie ahead. Thank you for things you already carry in your heart for us. 
And we all know them, but as we continue with you, you do new things and show us new things and take us into new realms and new seasons and we stay with the routine of continuing with you. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Are you alive, but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others, you seem to know your way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. Today he's waiting for you with arms open wide and he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly mp3 gifts, please visit our website, www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.